Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are reading Genesis chapter 39. May the Lord speak to our hearts and minds as we go through this chapter. This chapter can be divided into three sections. Verse 1 to 6, God's blessings on Joseph and Potiphar. Verse 7 to 19, Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Verse 20 to 30, Joseph in prison. Now in the first section we see God's blessing on Joseph and Potiphar. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, Potiphar, captain of the guard, and he buys him. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. And Joseph lives in Potiphar's house. And his master saw that the Lord was with Joseph and whatever he is doing, it was successful. And he makes Joseph Potiphar's attendant and he tells to take care of everything. Since then, God blessed the household. God's blessing was on everything. And Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he, and he did not know what what he had except for the bread which he ate in the next section of this chapter we see joseph and potiphar's wife now joseph was handsome in form and appearance now potiphar's wife cast longing eyes on joseph and said lie with me now joseph says my master unconcerned with the house and entrusted all to me none is greater than i in this house my master withheld nothing from me except you and how can i sin against god now day after day potiphar's wife asked Joseph to sleep with her but he refused to sleep with her and be or be with her and one day he was caught and uh, he left his garment and he ran away some of the notes on Potiphar is written below his home is Egypt his family is husband of an unidentified woman occupation is captain of the guard a military position under pharaoh and uh, best known as the Egyptian to whom Joseph was sold as a slave now when Joseph ran away leaving his garment in Potiphar's wife's hand now she calls her servants and says this hebrew was bought to mock all of us he came to sleep with me i screamed loudly that he fled and left his garment and again she says to Potiphar when he came this hebrew slave you brought to us mocked all of us i screamed loudly that he fled and left his garment now Potiphar burned with anger and he puts him in prison in the next section we see Joseph in the prison was 22 23 and the lord was with joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison and the keeper of the prison committed to joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in prison whatever they did there it was his doing and the keeper of the prison did not look in anything that was under joseph's authority because the lord was with him and whatever did the lord made it prosper some of the key verses we can see here in verse 2 to 4 we see the verse Uh, successful overseer of his house thus this involved authority as the steward of the whole estate and of one of the criteria for which was trust no doubt joseph was conversant in the egyptian language we see in verse 5 the word the blessing of the lord joseph was experiencing fulfillment of the abrahamic covenant even at the time before israel was in the land in verse 6 we see except for the bread which he ate now potiphar delegated all the works to joseph so much that he was no longer knew the full extent of his own business affairs in verse 9 there is a word this is great wickedness joseph explained to potiphar's wife when first attempted that adultery would be a gross violation of ethical convictions which demanded the utmost respect of his master and a life of holiness before his god in verse 17 the word hebrew servant used by potiphar's wife intended to heap scorn upon someone definitely unworthy of any respect in verse 21 again we see the word the lord showed him mercy god did not permit his initial painful imprisonment to continue and this is the egypt when joseph's time about 1700 bc and egypt was already a great and ancient civilization when joseph rose to power at that time The lesson we learn in this chapter about Joseph is how pure and holy he has protected his life from sin. The word of God exhorts the same concept in many various scriptures. In Romans 13:12, it says, "No, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of the light." 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 says, "But have renounced the hidden things of the dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God." Colossians 2:11 says, "In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision of made without hands, in putting off body of sins of flesh by the circumcision of Christ." 
and First Timothy 4, 7 says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and excise thyself rather unto godliness. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 says, Be thou a man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Titus 2.12 says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. May the Lord speak this verse to our hearts and live accordingly. May the Lord bless this word. Amen.